Now, our first speaker from the global perspective is Mr. Dave Allen, Plato Investment Management's Head of Long Short Strategies and Portfolio Manager of the Plato Global Alpha Fund. The Plato Global Alpha Fund is a long short global equities fund dedicated to providing to proving investors or whether investment solutions that can generate alpha throughout the cycle. The team isn't mandated to stick to a particular style like value, growth, or quality. Instead, the fund is focused on generating consistent features so those in the accumulation phase can grow their assets over time. The fund aims to outperform the MSCI World Net Returns on Hash Index by 4% per annum after fees over the median long term. Prior to Plato, Dave worked for JP Morgan Asset Management in London for 15 years, where he designed and launched the JP Morgan Euro Equity Plus Active Extension Fund, which grew to 6 billion euro. Today's presentation topic is shorting the losers and backing the winners, Plato's all-weather investment strategy. Welcome, Dave. Uh, thank you so much uh, for, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, so the, the fund uh, that I'll talk to about today is the Plato Global Alpha Fund. Uh, so this strategy has a MSCI World uh, benchmark and uh, is suitable as a, a core allocation for your equity exposure or a satellite allocation. What's really distinctive about this strategy is it's 150% long and 50% short. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means we've got 50% more firepower for our best ideas, but we've also got 50% short. Uh, that gives us the ability to make money through the companies that are, are going to underperform. And in this environment where rates are, are going through the roof, uh, companies that have been limping along and, and never making a profit are really being found out. The performance to date have been very strong in, in last year's uh, value-dominated market and then this year's growth-dominated market. We're actually outperforming the MSCI world by almost 9%. Uh, per annum since the strategy was launched. If we look at uh, the performance, um, as we alluded to, of strategies that uh, I've run in the past, we have uh, the active extension strategy here on the left-hand side from my time at JP Morgan, where over a decade-long period, we outperformed by about 4% per annum uh, relative to the MSCI benchmark. On the right hand side, this is a long short, uh, actually a, a market neutral hedge fund strategy where we generated uh, an annualized alpha of around 10% uh, per year. So we have a, a fantastic, uh, Plato, you know, we've got 10, 11 billion um, of assets under management and we're sort of known and loved for the, the Australian income strategy. Um, but what many of you may not be aware of is we've got a, a tremendous depth of talent in global and in global long short. Uh, George Platt, of course, uh, was the head of the Macquarie um, hedge fund group for many years. Charles uh, was largely his, his right hand man. And we have uh, Don, uh, the Dr. Don, of course, uh, launched Australia's uh, first ever uh, 13030 strategy um, when he's back at State Street uh, well over a decade ago and Chanel as well with extensive long short experience. And they're, they're the faces that are really driving the performance um, that, uh, that we've delivered so far. Um, the, the key investment philosophy behind everything we do is a company for us to invest, it has to be a high quality business, um, but high quality businesses is the market's quite uh, efficient and they'll tend to trade at a premium to the market. So we're looking for those high quality businesses that for some reason the market um, isn't um, isn't really uh, accounting for that value correctly. Um, of course, cheap names can remain cheap for five, 10 years. Good being right if you're right um, five, 10 years too early. So we'll always wait for those cheap, high quality names um, to have that profit potential to be unlocked with some sort of a catalyst or a change in sentiment. The final hurdle that a company must overcome for it to make it into our, our portfolio is uh, a system of over 100 red flags that we've uh, we've developed for, for almost a, a decade. Uh, the red flags is one of the most distinctive parts of the, the Plato investment process. 
Um, and really, the red flags are about uh, avoiding landmines and also identifying great short opportunities. Um, so if we see a cluster of red flags where a company has weak governance, it signs of financial distress, really aggressive accounting, uh, then those companies we, we really try and steer clear of. If a company has eight or more red flags, then that company on average will underperform the benchmark by about 20% over the next 12 months. So it's a pretty substantial number. If you can just avoid those blow ups in your portfolio, you're halfway there. Uh, but if you can go one step further and short those names, then you can generate uh, some fantastic alpha. And indeed, 90 uh, to 95% of the alpha that we've generated on the strategy to date has actually been on uh, on that short side. Uh, there's some really interesting names uh, globally and in Australia at the moment uh, that have a, a very large number of red flags. So Brainchip, this is a company that has uh, 22 red flags and uh, uh, that out of the 10,000 companies we look at globally, they're in. They're actually, it's the second largest number of red flags. And it's a company that had a valuation of around $3 billion around the start of the year. And this is a company that's got, got less revenue than, than some cafes. So there are a wealth of opportunities out here. I think it's almost a once in a, a lifetime opportunity for, for shorting strategies to, to make money on these sorts of, of names. On the long side, though, uh, there's some names we really like. Uh, BMW is a great value um, company. You know, it's incredible to me. Such a storied name can trade at six and a half times earnings. Um, and they've got a huge amount of growth, even in their EV space, growing at 35% per year, which is the same as Tesla. Uh, we look to drive really consistent returns by having the very best value names, the best growth names and the best quality names in the portfolio. So not tied to any one thematic or one style. Uh, a great growth name that we like in the portfolio is Novo Nordisk. Uh, of course, uh, they're, they're at the forefront of the anti-obesity um, drugs, 80, 90% market share uh, in that. Um, ASML, they're at the very apex of the um, semiconductor supply chain. They actually make the machines that make the chips that are behind all of the most advanced AI. So whoever wins that AI race, ASML uh, um, will win irrespective of that. And by having those exposures to some of these great companies that I've personally been invested in for well over a decade, uh, we can drive consistent returns and not this feast and famine returns that you've seen from some highly concentrated managers. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. The outperformance of the strategy since launch is almost 9% after fees. Um, but I think equally gratifying, if you look on the right-hand side, the upside and downside capture of the strategy. So the upside capture is about 1.25. So that means when the market's going up, we're going up more than the market. Uh, the downside capture is about uh, 0.8. So when the market's going down, we're preserving capital better uh, than the market. So that provides those nice characteristics we like to see as uh, as investors. That's translated to very consistent returns over time. This shows the performance of the strategy compared to uh, the 40 largest uh, competitor funds. And you can see that we've uh, we've added alpha consistently in, in a pretty difficult period for, for investors with lots of different themes. So that what are the key takeaways that we can de deliver that high alpha as we've done um, here and uh, in past lives, but without that high concentration and those severe drawdowns, the focus really on that all weather performance, whether it's a recession or whether it's a growth market where we're not looking to make excuses, we're, we're looking to make returns irrespective. The red flags are absolutely critical within that um, to A, avoid landmines on the long side, but B, really drive out from the short side. And uh, and ultimately that's all contributed to some very strong performance in, in quite a challenging period uh, for, for markets. Are there any questions uh, that you'd like to to go through? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Absolutely. There are a few questions here. The first question we have is around AI. So we know that there is a lot of hype surrounding AI at the moment. So how are you looking at AI? And the second part of the question is, uh, any more broadly, how do you play these thematics that emerge from time to time with so much hype? Yeah, I think it's a it's an excellent question. And 
you know, many people uh, hadn't even heard of ChatGPT uh, until uh, last November, and and now it's upending you know, almost every industry you can think of. Um, in such a, a rapidly changing space, I think it's it is difficult though to to pick the eventual winners um, downstream. So it's very much um, our philosophy that you want to have more of a, a picks and shovels approach where you're investing right at the apex of the supply chain. So ASML is the name I, I mentioned just earlier. You know, they make the, the deep ultraviolet lithography machines that are critical to every single um, AI process uh, in the world. And uh, that's a way that you can get access to the thematic, but without taking on too much idiosyncratic risk as the, the landscape changes from week to week and month to month. Mm. And that makes sense. And can you touch on why you do think investors should consider locating to a long, short strategy as opposed to just all alone only? Yeah, like uh, another, another good question, I, I think. Um, you know, like... Uh, Outperforming consistently with a, a purely long only strategy is is difficult. If you want to generate income, long only is perfect. It's the perfect vehicle for that. But if you want to generate alpha, long only is almost like going to war with a water pistol. It, it, it's hard yakka. Um, say that you identify that a company's fraud, um, all you can do is not hold it. But the second you can uh, be long short, you've taken off the handcuffs and you can generate a huge amount of alpha on the short side. And, and this environment where there's a lot of dispersion between your winners and your losers, um, companies are being found out um, that had lofty valuations that are being torched by rapidly rising rates. Um, yeah, it's a great environment for long short, without a doubt. And it's we've definitely had that tailwind behind us uh, in generating the, the strong performance that we have. Mm. Mm. Well, thank you, Dave. Great to see you. Take care. Thank you so much.